Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, July 16th, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So we're going to jump into our market technicals dashboard. You can see uh, stocks were mixed today, major indices all hovering more or less around flat, slight tilt to the negative with the NASDAQ 100 down half a percent on the day. You can see the five-day change numbers are still strong, mostly positive territory and we do remain above most of the key simple moving averages in all of the major indices. If we scroll down, take a look at sector performance over the past five days, we have transports at the very top, followed by semiconductors and industrials. And on the downside, we still have the lagging biotech healthcare combination, followed by utilities. For major markets, silver, nice push today and the start of this week, moving to the top of the pile here, followed by emerging markets and the S&P 500. And on the downside, we still have volatility, natural gas, and TLT. So let's jump into the charts here. Let's take a look at what's going on. Remember, it's only Tuesday here. This is a weekly uh, chart of the S&P 500 cash market. You can see the range so far is very narrow. It was a tight trading range today and yesterday as the market really seems to be sort of just gearing up for uh, earnings season, which did sort of officially kick off this week. We had banks reporting today, J. P. Morgan, um, amongst others, also reporting today, more tomorrow. Goldman Sachs was today. So uh, the market starting to digest some of those some of those earnings reports. Take a look at your holdings. Make sure you know when those dates are uh, for any individual stocks that you hold. Uh, but really, when we look at the weekly picture here, nothing has changed from the uh, weekend recap we put out on Saturday or on Friday. We remain just under all-time highs. Trends are all pointing higher here. We're above the uh, key relevant support level of 29.55 or so. That to me is the line in the sand. If we start losing that level, uh, then you know, short to intermediate term, that puts the brakes on just a little bit as momentum uh, wanes and a, a potential kind of false breakout is at hand. Uh, but until and if that level breaks, uh, it does seem to be all systems go to the upside here. The bulls just remain in control doesn't mean we can't pull back doesn't mean we can't come back and break this level uh, but as it stands now the way I you know interpret uh, the technicals here it's a it's a market that you want to be positioned long looking for upside rather than trying to aggressively short it uh, of course when we look at something like the volatility uh, VIX fear index here it is still trading right around 12 coming into earnings season um, so it is at basically year-to-date lows uh, as it stands right now at the lows of the low end of the range of the year uh, around 12 and you know especially today and yesterday session it, it certainly speaks to uh, you know a, a 12 VIX maybe even a 10 VIX just given how little movement there was over the past two days but again with earnings coming uh, we would expect to maybe see a little bit of pickup there in some of the intraday movement and individual stock movement. So uh, all in all, to wrap up the S&P 500 here, 29.55, that's the level I'm looking at. No overhead resistance. We are just trading under all-time highs. And really, uh, as we've been saying here, eyes back to the Russell 2000. I again think this is the interesting market to watch here and mostly because just take a look at how tight the small cap index has gotten over the past two weeks. We've essentially gone nowhere trading in between 154 and 156 a two point range, which is about 1% just overlapping back and forth for the past 10 trading sessions. So for me, uh, this looks pretty due for some volatility expansion here. And in fact, I'm watching this closely for a potential breakout trade here. We got to see what direction it comes. Uh, certainly to the upside here would help fuel the market uh, and be bullish overall if we can start to break the upper end of this range and then make an attack on this 160 level, which is now at multi-month resistance. Distance. That's going to be the bullish scenario. And of course, if we start to roll over here, if we start to break down, uh, then maybe that coincides with uh, a loss in the S&P 500 or a retest at minimum of 29.55. And then the bulls would really be, um, you know, um, basically on defense to try and save uh, these nearby trends. So Russell 2000, keep an eye on it. Very contracted there. Going to be looking for some vol expansion in the coming days. And when we look at the 
Q's. We can see this one here did pull off half a percent today. Again, 191 is about approximately the level that we want to see this hold above to keep it acting as strong and as bullish as possible. So far, it's doing that. It does look like it wants to maybe pull back a little bit here and retest that area. There's a small open gap uh, to fill that closes right around 189 or so. So uh, coming back down to fill that gap and, and you know, holding here or holding there uh, would be exactly what, um, you know, the, the bull case would want to see. Uh, otherwise, if we reject hard, if we start falling back into this old range and lose the April highs, that would not be a good sign for the market overall either. So that basically wraps up the major markets. Let's start taking a look now at some of the other um, or th those were the indices. Let's take a look at some of the major markets. Here is TLT. Uh, so if we look here on the weekly chart, it is slightly higher, but it had a pretty bearish week. We had that um, not quite an engulfing, although Usually I like to look at engulfing as, as even engulfing the tails, but it did engulf the body of last week's range and it did take out the past six weeks lows. And so far, we're basically just kind of uh, popping up, moving sideways here at the bottom end of this range. It still looks pretty weak. It looks suspect here. You can see the distribution days or you can see down days on heavier volume are starting to uh, sort of accumulate here. So that means they're stacking up uh, in favor of the sellers, at least in the short term, as we talked about uh, in the weekend recap, this weekly chart is still uh, pretty strong here over the past couple of months. So I wouldn't count this over and out uh, just yet, but certainly in the short term, it does look uh, like we do want to pull back or at least move sideways here and digest uh, the strong April, May, June run up. If we go to metals next, we see GLD here really, uh, you know, pulling back a bit today on, on Tuesday, but not doing a whole lot. Still structurally, it's kind of sitting in this consolidation pattern here. It had this really strong run up in June. Uh, it's basically consolidating most mostly through time here, making a series of higher lows and lower highs, kind of fueling up for the next move. Uh, so give it some time here. We'll see which way this ends up breaking. Silver, though, was notable. This one here is starting to perform. And take a look at the volume that came in today. Certainly got a fade off of the high. So it wasn't all, um, you know, it wasn't all victory for the bulls because we did get uh, a little bit of a, of a tamed reaction there as we started to push over 1460. But still, uh, a nice breakout here, good volume coming in. And this is really what we've been kind of hoping for, looking for, for the bull case on metals is for silver to start to outperform. Now, um, you know, I would have loved to see this happen a little bit sooner because we did have a position in silver and we got stopped out on this day right here at break even. Uh, so we no longer, you know, kind of caught flat footed now as silver starts to ramp. Um, but uh, other than that, I do like the fact that silver is starting to perform here. I still like it on dips and opportunities. So silver uh, starting to perform. We'll see if it can hold those gains into the end of the week. Last but not least, we'll look at some uh, commodity uh, oil here. So we can see uh, price was down on Tuesday, down almost 2%, heavier volume coming in, starting to challenge or get back to the, the range of last week. Uh, these lows here around 1170 or so, that's going to be where we want to see bulls step up if they are going to support this uptrend. Overall, though, this is pretty messy, in my opinion, not really interested in this one way or the other. Uh, so for me, just kind of an avoid right there for cleaner setups. Now, Natural gas here, I do still think is interesting. Of course, the action here was a little more abrupt to the downside than I would have preferred. But as we talked about in the weekend video, I do like for real tactical active traders uh, or a shorter term time frame for potential long opportunities into weakness here. Although I got to say, I'm not as um, you know big of a fan or excited to buy dips here with this um, kind of quick, swift three and a half percent move down, kind of a gap and really hold near the lows on increased volume. So I'm gonna have to just really let this settle out here and I'm still keeping an eye on it. I like the overall increase in volume over the past month or so of trading. Uh, I do like the positive divergence that is kind of set up here in, in uh, the MACD. So there are some things to like, but uh, you do have to be careful because all the longer term trends are still pointing to the downside here in natural gas. So that is it. That is what I have for the midweek video. Remember, we do have earnings season that we're uh, uh, in the middle of right now. So do pay attention to that. Otherwise, Thanks so much for tuning in to another video. Uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on The Trade Risk, thetraderisk.com forward slash blog to stay up to date with all of the latest posts. Have a great rest of the day and we'll see you in the next video update.